All right, now I did want to show you, we talked about the uh, non-invasive uh, method of removing the control arm that does not damage the boots. So if we were removing the control arm and did not want to damage the boots because we're putting it back on, we would not want to use the method I'm going to show you right now. You would have to use what we showed you first with hitting with the hammer to loosen the joints. Now, if that doesn't work and it is just not coming apart, you will have to use what's called a pickle fork or a ball joint separator. We call it a pickle fork, well, for obvious reasons. Notice that the fork end is tapered. We're going to insert that between the joint and the piece that the joint is going into. And basically, we're going to force it in there, which will separate the joint. So we'll show you that one here. And we have the joint separated. Now, it's not always that easy. Sometimes it does take a lot of force, even with a pickle fork. But when we do that, especially if it takes a lot of force, it's going to rip the boot. And that's why we typically don't want to do that if we're going to reuse this control arm or whatever joint we happen to be separating. All right, now we're also going to replace this sway bar link. You can see that while the joint here is nice and tight, the rubber is worn out. So this is moving around more than it should. The bracket is loose in the rubber. We're going to reuse this bracket on the new control arm, so we'll separate that from the sway bar link. Right now, we'll just remove the link altogether from the sway bar up here. Now, the inboard end next to the ball joint, we have to hold with a thin wrench. This particular one is 16 millimeter. They can be various different sizes, up to 18. This is a special wrench. We made this one. Uh, we ground down the wrench thin. So it will fit here, a regular wrench will not fit in the space available. We have a 17 on this side, we'll just break that free, and we'll work this off. Okay, and here we have the nut off, and we can remove the complete link. On the bench, we'll pull this bolt and nut off, get our bracket so we can install it on the new arm. Okay, now we are ready to install the new arm and the control arm bushing. I have the new arm here. Now, I'm going to do something that will help anybody in the future, be it me or anybody else, in removal if these arms have to come off again. I'm going to put a small amount of the Liquimoly anti-seize compound that we offer on the tapered part of the joint. on both, inner and outer, before I slide them up into place. This will prevent them from seizing in the future. We'll put the inboard in, and we'll put it up far enough to uh, start our nut on top. Okay, now we have the nut started just so the arm won't fall on the inboard joint. Now for the outboard joint, we'll get that through the eyelet at the bottom of the strut, and again, start the nut. Now, when we tighten these lock nuts, typically the spindles will turn with the nut. The spindles do have an Allen, a female Allen recess in the top to put a wrench in. The other thing we can do is put pressure on the tapered joint so that it doesn't spin. We can do that by putting a jack under the joint and pressing upward to create some pressure, and that's what we'll do here. Okay, so now we have a jack under the outboard joint. We're just going to raise it into position. You may have a hydraulic floor jack with a block of wood on top of the saddle. We'll raise this up, tighten it a bit, until we can see there's some good pressure on that. If you have your car up on jack stands, be careful you don't put so much pressure that you relieve the chassis weight on the jack stand. We don't want to do that. Just enough to press that joint up into place. So here we have our 19 millimeter wrench again, and we'll run the nut down and tighten it. Now that we have the nut tightened, we'll move our jack and we'll put it under the inboard joint and do the same thing. 
For the installation, we're going to lubricate the pin on the arm and the bushing. We're going to use diluted dishwashing soap and water so that it will slide on, but then dry up and actually help hold the bushing in place. We don't want the bushing moving on the arm. So we'll squirt some here and into the bushing. And we'll start turning down these nuts on the installer evenly on both sides to pull the bushing on. And this will simply pull the bushing all the way on, slow but sure. Okay, now we've got the bushing basically all the way on. We'd want to press it until the front of the bushing is right up against the end of the arm. And that's good. Now, one other point as far as positioning on this. Position the arm on the uh, bracket parallel with the position of the end of the control arm here. So just put this in line with whatever angle is on the end of the arm here. So this is all installed. We'll remove our tool and then we'll install the bracket to the vehicle. And right, now we have our tool removed. The bushing is in place. I'm going to coat the bolts with some of the Liqui Moly anti-seize compound. Just give it a quick spread. Wipe my finger off. Now in installing this, I don't know if the camera will show it from that angle, but there's two uh, dow alignment dowels in the frame here. And the back side of the bracket, I have the other bracket from the other side of the car here. The back side of the bracket has recesses. Those recesses fit over the dowels to keep the bracket in alignment. So make sure when you install this, you have the recesses in the bracket properly set up on the dowel sleeves. Let's get this into place and we'll get one bolt in. Okay, and then the other bolt. Now be careful that you don't cross thread these bolts. We do get calls, people have cross threaded these and it's not a pretty sight to have to try and replace those threaded inserts in the frame. Now, I'm going to run these home and as I do, I'm going to make sure that those dowels stay in proper alignment. Now, as I get close to the dowels, I'm going to be careful with my tightening to make sure the bracket actually goes properly over the dowels. There we go. Then we can just torque these in place. Okay, we're fully installed here. The only thing left is to install our new uh, sway bar link and the bracket on the control arm. Okay, now on the sway bar link, I'm going to first off install the link into the sway bar. Now remember, we have those flats on here to hold the, with the thin 16 millimeter wrench to hold the stud from turning while we tighten the nut. Put it through the sway bar, get the nut on. Okay, now I've got the sway bar link connected to the sway bar here, the joint's nice and tight. I'm going to install the bracket and the through bolt to the sway bar link. Now I've put anti-seize compound on both and we'll install the bracket here into the control arm, our washer and our nut. Okay, and now we'll insert the through bolt. Now you may find that the holes are not lining up perfectly. On this one, initially, the sway bar link is a little higher than the hole on the bracket. So what we'll do, just pull down on the sway bar. It'll have some give to it. If you needed to do a lot, you could put a jack under the control arm to move it up as well. 
There we go. So we'll tighten the nut here and the nut and bolt here, and then we'll be done. This side is fully complete. So you can see replacing the complete control arm or just the bushing. We could have done just the bushing with the arm on the car. It's relatively easy to do. You do need to have the car up on at least jack stands. Ramps won't work for this. And uh, our special tool for the bushing removal and installation, which is well uh, less than the cost of labor for having someone do the job, and you've got the tool for the next time. Remember, hit your like key if you've liked what you've seen, send us some comments, and don't forget to visit our tech blog at blog.bavauto.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter, and visit our online store at bavauto.com. Thanks for watching. We're on to another video now.